things. With no previous experience, I studied trumpet in college. I was the one in the practice room playing Likely Row, not trumpet tune by Purcell or by Jeremiah Clark. I was the one who didn't quite understand the officer and had a ruby red ring around my lips walking around campus. I have since purchased an old trumpet and I have it in my piano studio on a shelf. It's there to keep me humble. So, it is with a great deal of respect for these wonderful musicians and it's with great excitement that we welcome the Prairie Brass Band back to the TPAC stage for the third time. With generosity of an anonymous donor and of course the generosity of Midway National Bank and the Washington Island Ferry Line. Please join me in welcoming the Prairie Brass Band and their Bye. 
miners. Beginning in the 19th century, almost every mine, mill, and many fishing villages had active brass bands. They became the center of community life in England, playing frequent concerts that included marches, hymns, and a variety of arrangements of classical pieces. Attending an orchestra concert in far off London was far too expensive for small village families, and the brass bands provided a wonderful alternative. The stories portrayed in Bradstock are compelling. First, the desperate struggle of the miners against the inevitable collapse of their workplace and homes during the years that Margaret Thatcher was prime minister. Second, the miners' courageous attempt to maintain dignity during the crisis. Integral to this part of the story is Danny, the conductor of Grimley, who believes that music is most important in the lives of the miners. His son is a miner and a trombonist, and he is struggling to keep his family together. Finally, the addition of a love story. Most bands, like Grimley, and some even today, are men only. In the story of Grasshoff, Gloria walks into a Grimley band rehearsal. Let's see what happens.
brass band. No, that's on Thursdays. Tonight is Seaver's basket weaving. <laughs>